1981's The Howling may seem like your average werewolf movie. However, the movie is a warning about giving in to sexual obsession. To highlight this lesson, the main character, Karen White, is pure and kind and loyal and uninterested in engaging in lust. Karen's the only normal one in the movie who doesn't have lust in her heart. The very first time her character appears on screen, she's confronted by some random guy in an alley asking for sexual favors. She turns him down, of course, because she's a woman of virtue. How much? Eddie? John. How much for a half and half? Sorry, Betty. Excuse me. Excuse me. Hey. Hey, you're that TV lady, ain't you? Yeah, but that's all. <laughs> to further solidify the lost theme, the opening scene shows two cops driving around downtown as they discuss how weird the city is. It's important to note what the film shows as the cops talk. They show porno stores and strip clubs as they speak. They even speak with a prostitute. Boy, there's a lot of flotsam and jetsam out tonight, isn't there? Seems like there's more of them every time we get out of here. I wonder where they come from, you know? I wonder where they're going to. I don't know where they come from, but they got to where they're going. Six David Jail, 1455. Contact lost. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She asked me directions to it. Well, how long ago? Well, a couple of minutes. The city has become overrun with perverts and people looking to quickly satisfy their sexual urges. Karen White is a news reporter, and the man Karen's meeting, Eddie Quist, he's been responsible for several rapes and murders. His apartment has newspaper clippings of his crimes. Eddie is also a werewolf. It's Eddie. Karen meets with Eddie at a porno booth. He shows her a movie and then attacks her as he begins to change into a werewolf. The police show up and kill Eddie before he can kill Karen. However, Karen is left traumatized, forgetting what happened and has terrible dreams. Yeah, yeah, there's a broad that came in here. I don't know what happened in there. I don't, I don't remember. She and her husband Neil visit a quiet, secluded retreat for survivors like herself. Of course, this place is also filled with werewolves. What needs to be said about the subtext of the werewolf in The Howling is that each werewolf represents a person who has given in to their extreme sexual urges. The werewolf is just a physical representation of that. This can be seen in the entire Quist family. Each one has the need to aggressively express their lust onto others. Eddie Quist, the main villain, isn't just a werewolf. He's also a serial rapist and killer. Another brother, T.C. Quist, has his heart set on Karen from the moment he sees her. He even stalks her at night. And Marsha Quist seems to think of nothing but sex. Each time we see Marsha, she attempts to seduce Neil until she finally does. Neil resists Marsha's urges only to suffer a bite wound from a werewolf attack immediately after. The werewolf could have killed him, but instead chose to bite him and make him a werewolf too. This was done to bring Neil into the sexually obsessed world of Marsha and the others. Neil has been cursed with obeying his sexual urges from here on. It's hopeless for him. It seems that this trope of hopelessness is common in werewolf stories. It implies that once the werewolf sets his target on you, even if it hasn't bitten you yet, there isn't anything you can do about it. Dealing with a werewolf is lethal and inescapable. They always win, and you always lose. If you do survive, you'll become like them. The only way to avoid becoming a werewolf is to live a pure life by avoiding temptation. The werewolf represents the symbolic death and rebirth of a person who is changed in an immoral way. Now, 
After several scenes with some of the greatest special effects ever put to film, Karen eventually suffers a bite too. And from her husband, no less. Even the gentle and moral character, Karen, can't escape the wrath of others' lust. Rather than becoming a slave to her sexual urges like Marsha and the others, Karen chooses to die. That's why she cries at the end. But she doesn't cry because she's going to die. She cries because she isn't able to live a life of purity. Her moral code will disappear and her savage sexuality will take over. Although she chose to die, the memory of her virtue and honor lives on. To her, that's more important than living consumed by lust. If Karen had chosen to go on living, she would have become the opposite of who she was. She would have become Marcia. Marcia might have been pure at one point, but she had been consumed by the werewolf curse as did her two brothers. She suffers from hopelessness and represents death of the moral code. That's why she only cares about sex. She only cares about satisfying her immediate earthly urges. So what does the movie suggest by having Karen suffer the werewolf curse at the end? The message is that even good people will suffer, even when they do the right thing. The movie implies that being virtuous and resisting sexual advances is useless because eventually they'll get you too. It doesn't matter whether you're in the city or in the countryside, lust is always there to tempt you and to curse you. To reinforce this unkillable lust theme, the ending scene of Marsha ordering a rare hamburger proves that sexual obsession doesn't ever die.